Stella Schultz, and I'm with the Lewis County Farm Bureau. And on behalf of the Lewis County Farm Bureau and the uh, Republican Committee, we'd like to welcome everybody here. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedules to come and meet the candidates running for Lewis County Sheriff. And this also gives uh, the sheriff candidates an, an opportunity to introduce themselves and uh, the ideas that they have for, for what job they'd be taking. So at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, John Moore from Channel 7 News. He's going to be our moderator this evening. We're going to have opening statements from each candidate, uh, about two minutes per candidate. And then there's uh, two questions in four different uh, areas. The first one would be recreation and road patrol, then two questions on training and manpower, two questions on state mandates, and then two questions on general administration issues. And there'll be two minutes for each of those for the candidates. And then we'll end with a, a three minute closing statement from each candidate. So uh, with that, I'll introduce uh, John Moore and we'll take over. So thanks everybody uh, for coming and the candidates obviously as well. We're a little short-handed with microphones. We have one that works, but I've been telling them there's only one of us gonna be speaking at a time. So we're gonna do some handing off of microphones here. So the questions, are they in the various categories, as Joe sure. said, and the candidates have had access to the questions so they know what may be asked of them. Unless um, I make up something of my own. Yes, sir. Can we do the Pledge of Allegiance first? Yeah. Everybody in agreement? Yeah. yeah. Department. That's where I did my career. During that time, 
or was involved in many specialized units, different levels of accommodation. But most important, when I retired from Rochester, I moved to Lewis County and put my roots down. The reason why I did that is the years before, when I passed this town and recreated, that was fishing, hunting, snowmobiling, not ATV though, not that. I thought to myself, what a wonderful community. I saw the people were. I saw I was treated as a person coming from outside this community. It was a great place to raise a family. So I bought property here, built a home, and then I went to work part-time for the sheriff's office. And not because I was seeking a job, but as you know, some of you have been here before, because they got all over on my ATV after I bought one here. And I was told I was on a closed road. I said, thank you for letting me know that. Went back to my house the following day. That deputy came back to my house and said that uh, the sheriff had kind of let me meet. Went back over, saw the sheriff, did an interview with him. He saw I was interested in ATV and recreation and, and, and so he gave me a job part-time as a recreation officer. I did that for a little while, then they gave me a part-time road deputy. I did that for six years, a part-time deputy in the agency. And then I ran for sheriff. And from 2012 forward, I've been the sheriff of Lewis County, leading my men and women, humbly, respectfully, <laughs> with courage, with humility. I'm very thankful to those people. I'm very thankful to my men and women because that is what makes your agency and the community, where the community has been accepted, talking, and supportive. So I'm very really humbled to still be your sheriff. And thank you for being here tonight to hear these words. Thank you. Okay, we're well, going to start with questions. And the first category is recreation and road patrol. The question is, how will you balance the department's demand for road patrols with the increasing need to provide a presence to promote safety for recreational vehicle activities? Going to go to the sheriff for the first response. Well, you know it's funny, that question comes up every time I run for sheriff. It comes up every year. The questions that I'd like to see be asked, we ask the public, but I won't let you do that tonight. Because the questions were already given to us as candidates about seven days ago to prepare for this. That to me is not fair to the public. I think you need to know who we are and ask this question yourselves. But I'll answer that one really quick. I have to say within the budget that I'm fiscally given by the legislators, I have to operate within that budget. By doing that, I provide the best service I possibly can to the community, to the riders of Montauk Hill. That's the best that we can do. We have to operate within our budget. We've done that for the last 12 years. We've also managed to pull extra help by the men and women who volunteer to work overtime when the coverage is needed. I'm very thankful for that. Now we do have a couple SROs in the schools. And by a contract that was written up between the legislators and school superintendents with me agreeing that when the SROs are out of school in the summer, they live in full time on the recreation patrol, and that's what they do. They cover two lakes, and they also cover Tug Hill and the trail system throughout Lewis County. I think that so far, we've been doing a pretty good job of that. And I'm proud of men and women in patrol. I thank them for that.
all collected and marking this stuff down as we go along. Focusing on those things, we're going to figure out the days and times where we're getting the most traffic, where they seem to be having the most problems, and then we can take that and come up with an effective scheduling plan. We're going to focus on those times and dates, and with the manpower that we have, make that the priority in those areas. If we need to find other resources, if we have an event going on or a ride, uh, an ATV comes putting on, we don't have the manpower, we may have to reach out to other agencies, fill in the gaps, but we want to make sure that we are providing safety for the riders and respect for the landowners through this process. It's a great system that we have. We need to keep that going and we need the support to do that. So the next question, the same category, has to do with large-scale public events. So the question for the sheriff would be how does he handle law enforcement assets for large-scale public events? But in Nicole's case, how would she plan to handle those events? So let's take, for example, the third run. So prior to the event, I was watching the activity going on people from outside the area were reaching out to the ATV clubs. They were concerned because of the political climate that we have in the county right now, that there will be more police presence in the past there hasn't been. So they were concerned there would be police presence and they were thinking about not coming. In my mind, I'm thinking, okay, uh, they probably have bad intentions in coming here. They're not willing to ride if there is a police presence. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's not up to the clubs to tell these people, hey, come here and be safe and follow the rules. It's up to the law enforcement official as sheriff to come up with a plan ahead of time and set the stage. So gathering agencies together, either giving a press release or a press conference and saying, listen, if you plan to come here, we expect you to follow the rules, to be safe, to respect our landowners. There will be a police presence. If you bring attention to yourselves, there could be recourse for those actions because we have a great trail system and we have the privilege that the landowners give us this opportunity to have a trail system. And that's a big deal. And when that gets disrespected and it's not controlled and there's no deterrence, then it gets out of control and then we have liability issues. And now we have a possibility of not even being able to have the event. So it's part of my job as sheriff to make sure I set the stage so we can continue this for the businesses that profit from these large events and gatherings and making sure we're providing service for the people, for the landowners, for the riders to be safe. Of the legislators, a security company on top of the hill. 
So we work great with all those, all those different, uh, a lot of different help. The best you can do is to educate the riders, self-policing of their own at events, respect for everybody, number one, and I don't think the folks are going to say it. A lot of times, of course, the media doesn't help out with that. Facebook doesn't help out with that. What helps out is this face-to-face -face conversation. Amen. Hey, knock it off. Get off those people's progress from the trail system. You want to mess it up for the rest of us? That's what we let you hear. Enforcement from our deputies. Enforcement from our NCON and state police partners. That's what we've been doing for the last 12 years. And it's now the event's grown. That's a given. The event has grown. And we'll keep on coming with better ideas every time. We learn from what happens. But for the most part, we've been very lucky. Very lucky. I hope it stays that way. We're going to do the best that we possibly can with what we have to find good ways to continue to keep it that way. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to training and manpower. This is kind of a general question, but what are your priorities when it comes to training your deputies and your staff? Number one is the training. So you want to do the job of confidence. I brought this tonight. I couldn't wait for this. I'm holding here the former Governor Cuomo's <laughs> police reform and uh, reformation collaborative Book on policing. That's a couple years ago. Remember this? Did anybody remember this book? I don't know what did. And, and some of our lawmakers. Two years ago, right? How's it worked out for the cities, the towns, and the villages with this new book? Bad. High rates of homicide. High crime. Burglaries are up. Robberies are up. Not putting people in the correction facilities. To make it more of a loss, to make it easier for me to get away with that. So, on the flip side of that, I send my men and women to the best training they can possibly get so the Attorney General's office doesn't come after them. So that they don't have the lack of confidence to do the job, to enforce the law that are on the book. That's the training. And I'm very glad to say that they will be and anxiously come and ask the training wherever they can find it. That says a lot to me, that they really like their job, that they really appreciate the community they work for, that they truly take it serious and have it in their heart, that they don't worry about what the media does, they don't worry about the naysayers and politics, they go out and do their job day and night to protect all of you, your children, your property, and I'm done proud of That's it.
and settlements because we have this background of training and I remember the agency. And that's something I'd like to work for for the people of Hooks County. So everyone's prepared, everyone's safe, and being effective with how they handle every situation they could possibly be faced with. Thank you. Also from training and manpower, what areas do you feel call for more attention and resources to provide protection to the public and their property? Okay, my travels and meeting with the Stoneman clubs, the ATV clubs, uh, repeatedly has come up over and over again, we need more police presence on the trail system. Coming up with that scheduling plan, finding areas to focus on, using manpower, using other agencies also to fill in the gaps. Working towards that, I think we can improve on that and be better and provide a better resource. If it's a manpower issue, we're going to have to deal with talking to the legislators and making sure we're on the same page. This is why we have these gaps, this is how we can fill it, and these are the resources that we need. The other issue that has come up several times is the drug issue. So, for me personally, I would really like to get involved with the youth. Back six years ago, we had this thing called the D.A.R.E. program. And they said it wasn't effective, but it's probably monetary reasons why they got rid of it. I met with Mountain for Prevention and talked with them. Do you have any similar programs that look similar to a D.A.R.E. program that we could incorporate in the school system? We have three schools with SROs out of six districts that we have in this county. Can we team up and come up with some form of presentations for the kids for drugs and violence that they could be dealing with? Yes, absolutely. So I uh, look forward to that, providing that for the kids in schools. Let's change the trajectory, starting with the youth, educating them, change the uh, perception that they have for law enforcement as well. Uh, that's a concern of mine because when I worked at the State Fair or at the recruiter booth, I had parents coming through and pointing at me and saying, did you see her? She's going to take your mom and dad away. And now this little child is looking at me like, oh, I'm going to stay away from that person. And I actually had to have conversations with parents and say, look, that's not the best idea to do that because if you lose your child on the fairgrounds now and they see me in uniform and I'm here to help them, they're going to think I'm bad and I'm going to take their parents away. So I want to focus on that, try to change the trajectory, uh, and improve with the youth of this town. My problem is going to hold is the community. The community. And then the children of this community. Several things that I did so I can share. I've been humbled by people volunteer to do the jobs that we do because of limited amounts of manpower. One that I'm really proud of though is Lewis County Drug Task Force. Back when all of a sudden we had a whole lot of other jobs in our county. We didn't have a drug task force. I went to the legislators, myself, district attorney, and we asked them to fund us for that. They wouldn't do it. It wasn't in the budget. So I went back to my men. I asked two people in my office. I said, I need a drug task force. Which one of you wants to be in charge? And I'll say his name. Sergeant Richard Knight stepped right up to the back and took it. I'm very proud of him. Then the district attorney got together with us. We collaborated together along with the village police department. We put together an all voluntary team. They're paid, but they all volunteer to come to them. Since that inception, I want to tell you what they've done. 255 cases we did, 27 search warrants, 109 drug buys, 264 felony indictments were handed down, misdemeanors 134, physical arrests 137, cashier $25,000 plus dollars, vehicles, four vehicles. These are the drugs that we took out of our county. Methamphetamine, pseudoephedrine, heroin, fentanyl, Cocaine, hallucinogenics, 
Amphetamines, pills, you name it, we did it. And we're still doing it today with manpower we had. Now to this day, to this day, with a collaborative effort, the district attorney's office in Los County Sheriff's Office, our district attorney has helped us fund what we do. I'm not here to knock in anything, but the legislators haven't been able to find the money in there yet to help us out sometimes. We've asked, and I'm continuing to ask for it. I'll continue to work with them. But to me, what's much more important over rail to trail system is our children in this community. Amen. The drug population. Yeah. That to me is what they want. Because their youth is tomorrow's future. And without them, we haven't got a future. Thank you. We are moving on to the category of state mandates. First question is, have you had a chance to address state lawmakers regarding bail reform? <laughs> would you talk about any changes need to be made? And if so, what would they be to? First on that? I don't think two minutes will be enough. I don't care what political party you belong to today. I know that you agree that bail reform is a failure in this yeah. state. Okay? It doesn't matter what party you want to. Somehow, some way, you've all been affected by it. Or you're going to be, I guarantee that. It's a travesty. It's a travesty of justice. I've been to all of you quite a few times to fight for you. To get to fight for your children. For your future. Not because that I like the, the limelight where somebody said to me earlier in the day about the power. Nothing to do with power. It has to do with you have the courage inside your heart to do what others won't, but they want you to do it. So I leave. I won't stand down to the tyranny that pushes you down upon you with your unlawfulness to make your lives a lot more unsafe. So bear it was a complete failure. I'll tell you also hurts. It hurts the person who's breaking the law. It hurts that drug addict. It hurts that homeless person. It hurts that person with mental health ability. Because before, when they were arrested in the rain, they came to the jails. They got help. Now they don't. They're not arraigned. Some that are, are turned right loose under bail reform. And they're right back to the street to do the same crime they did one hour ago, or four hours ago. Not good. I'll continue to work with our legislators, with our assemblymen, with our state senators, as I have with Mr. Griffo, Mr. Blankenbush, for any way that we can change this. Any way. But you know what it comes down to? It comes down to not just us doing that, but all of you, all of you getting involved. Now you direct your government, now it governs you. But I'll always fight for you. And do that as you share. Thank you.
and absolutely that would be something that could be worked through and done. So problem solving, working around the, the problems that we're facing to try to still protect the victim. We still have a job to do. We can't just say, oh, you know, we're, we can't do anything about it, bail reform. We still have to problem solve and come up to solutions to better serve the people here in this county. Also, it was a rollback that occurred. Uh, the state budget was delayed, rollback happened, and that was a, a fight over that. The judges now do have their discretion back. So this next year, it'll be interesting to see, we'll definitely see if the county jail system will we be processing more people in? If this is working, if this is reversing or rolling back and the judges have their discretion, we should see the process change, hopefully for the better. But we'll be able to tell that with the county jail how many more people we're processing. Uh, all working towards, right, coming up with these solutions, problem solving, to still provide the best service possible, even though our hands are tied for the people who listen. the pistol permit process. Do you think any modifications should be made in the process? If so, what should they do? So I did have an opportunity to talk to the county clerk's office. The process for pistol permits is taking around four to six months. On average, I talked to other people in other counties, they're up to nine months or even more than that. Um, so the process for them is to work with the Sheriff's Department with the background investigations that are done. In order to make sure the process is smooth and we're going through this as effectively as, as possible, we need to have open communication. If there's questions that come up or now uh, an overwhelming amount of pistol permits are coming through and to get background checks going through faster, we need to come up with either more scheduling uh, changes to provide that service quickly. It's important to talk back and forth and get feedback for that. Um, I also would like to somehow incorporate in the website. So if you look at other county agencies and you want to get information on how to get a pistol permit or what's going on with pistol permits, uh, it's very user friendly in other areas and other counties. I think you can definitely upgrade that in the website system. Now we're all linked into the county website where you can have helpful links for forms for uh, the opt-out, if you don't want your information given out as part of your pistol permit process, you have a link you can go to and do that. So it's important to have an easy step-by-step. -step. Everything's always changing. How can we make things better? How can we get through this process quickly? You know, to make sure everyone in a timely fashion is getting their pistol permits and, and making that process work better. So coming up with a website that can easily instruct people Tell them about the changes, tell them where these friendly links are to get through the process faster, would benefit people, uh, and make the process quick for police help. Pistol purpose. It is the job of the sheriff's office to conduct a background check on that. The judge in the, the, the county is the licensing officer. Through Lewis County Sheriff's Office, we have a full-time investigator. We have one full-time person assigned to this department. They're doing an outstanding job of streamlining and making that process go smoother. Not just faster, smoother and more accurate. And we have guidelines set by the governor, by the legislature down in Albany. We have to follow that. That's what we do. Even being a strong second amendment person, I don't buck the system. I worked with it. And we made it better. When they wanted to go into your First Amendment, your freedom of speech, your Facebook, and judge you on what you put on Facebook to disqualify you to get a pistol permit, is that right? No. Well, we're not doing that. And we have the discretion on that. But I can tell you that the process that they put in place to work together with the county clerk's office and our County Court Judge is absolutely tremendous. The judge and I, we talk frequently on this department, especially when I deny a this department. The judge then brings that person in for a second conversation to sit down. 
in all fairness to the citizen, because it is your Second Amendment right Amen. to own a firearm. We'll improve where it needs to be. We're open to that. But I'm darn proud, darn proud of the investigator that does that work and the other two investigators while doing their other duties pitch in and get those pistol permits flown. That's not easy, we're living on manpower we have. But we're doing a great job in other people in the county and those that have their pistol permits are very happy with the situation. Thank you. Now, from the category of general administration issues, do you feel the department's budget that is approved by the county board of the legislators is appropriate? <laughs> and if not, thank you. No, I don't think it's appropriate. But I do work within the confines of the fiscal restraint that the legislative body governs the sheriff's office with. And I have to cooperate with that. And that's what we do. Now there's been words put out there that the sheriff's argumentative, he's bullheaded, doesn't want to work with them, contrary to popular belief. Okay? I work closely with them. Do we disagree many times? Of course we do. But in the end, do we come together for the common good of the people of Lewis County? Yes, we do. Do I work to fulfill the salaries, the programs, the services for people of Lewis County? Yes, I do. But can I always use more? To do better? To have more manpower? Because I don't think that maybe you all understand and know if I'm going to say this, I'll say it again. 98% of the time, you only have two deputies covering a little under 1,300 square miles. Two deputies this entire county. You have a third person, a sergeant, a supervisor. That's dangerous. And not dangerous to them, it's dangerous to you as citizens. You put a car in the south, you put a car in the north. 1,300 square miles. You drive across Lewis County, what is it, 45 minutes or better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lady the other day, on a certain road in the southern zone, she was home. Burglar, a burglar came to her house, got out of his car, walked up to the house, knocked the windows out with a hammer, with a hammer, dressed all in black, reached inside the house, and thank God she had two dogs. Dogs did their job. By the time she called 911, by the time a close enough car got there, it was not fast enough to find a perpetrator. It's not my deputy's fault, it's not the state police's fault. It's the lack of manpower and not being able to be everywhere we're needed. So, no, I didn't have a little better budget. I would want the legislature to do the best that we can for the people of Lewis County. Thank you.
has one of the highest suicide rates in New York State, indicating a high need for mental health intervention. What do you see as the role of the Sheriff's Department when responding to mental health calls and situations? So the role on scene is to provide scene safety, scene security, being able to recognize a person in crisis, and the language to use with that person to hopefully de-escalate a situation if it's safe to do so for everyone involved. Also have knowledge of the resources that we have in this county to give the person in crisis, family members, loved ones, we have behavioral health services, that can help with that to provide service for them. I was able to attend tactical communications tra training through Bridges of Poverty. Uh, we have a lot of great not-for-profit organizations set up in this county. Uh, they established uh, this training for people to attend. It was great training. Also, I was able to meet a team of people called Lewis County Traumatic Loss Team. If you haven't heard about this, an awesome resource. So if it is a traumatic loss that you're not seeing for, this is vital to give loved ones, family members this information because I wish we had had it years ago uh, in dealing with these types of situations. So this group that came up with this plan and set this organization up is really a great resource. Having this knowledge to point people in the right direction, to help them with their issues, uh, is very important and we want to provide these services for the people of Lewis County and keep this going. It's great that these organizations exist. Mental health issues, health issues with Lewis County suicide. Unfortunately, yes, we do have suicides in Lewis County. Been to plenty of them myself, so have men and women. There was one time mental health within the county that was taken out. There was also mental health also within the state that was taken out as well. And yes, in the whole state, there are a lot of wonderful, not the proper groups that are going to assist us now. But they're not always available. And a lot of people don't all the time feel comfortable. One thing I understand with mental health and people who have Distrust of the public, distrust of the police community, and distrust of counselors they've dealt with before, hospitals. It's a very touchy situation, but I can tell you that the men and women of the Lewis County Sheriff's Office, our training, have done a fantastic job. I've been with them several times to several different incidents where I've watched them talk people out of suicide. That is something to see. The compassion from those men and women to keep it together when they're watching somebody put a knife to their throat, when they're standing on a chair with a rope around their neck, when they're ready to jump from a bridge. What do our men really do? They don't get angry, they don't shout at them, they talk to them with compassion, with reason. They build a one on one child relationship immediately. And they are not doctors and nurses, they are not psychiatrists, and they never will be, they shouldn't be. But they do the best with what they have when they come in to make that person feel loved, appreciated, that there's someone. It is a problem, not the sheriff's office only, and not the men and women that work the road patrol. It's back upon the state, it's back upon the counties to put those institutions back in place to help us out so that the visitors can properly care. Thank you. Amen. Alright, this question has to do with people in the jail. How effective do you feel the programs and services for incarcerated individuals are? And what other, if any, other services should be implemented? We should give you a chance again. <laughs> Um, you see, that's what I said earlier about these questions. That's fair to me to ask that question. But is it fair to this candidate? She hasn't been there yet. She doesn't know that. Because she's the only form of question that comes from the public to ask her 
how should you do that in heaven? Where should you be given that chance? So I'll answer mine. As a sheriff, we provide several different organizations that come to our jail. So, they get their GED, they can get health care, they can get uh, drug rehabilitation, drug rehabilitation, there you go. I want to have this one for you folks, I don't know or not, but you've got to make a big hit in your taxes. The state is now forcing me, along every other jail across the state of New York, that when he comes in, whether he's a drug addict or not, when he comes in, we now have to ask them if they want Suboxone. I don't even know what that is, okay? But usually people are heroin, are giving that treatment to help them out. It still keeps them at a certain high, so they don't have the angst from coming down from that, from that drug. But now we have to administer to them in our jail. Did you know that? No. Well, there's another thing I want me to tell you. There's another thing that your legislative body, your assemblymen, your senators, this is why I'm saying it's so important to know your government. So now I have to start implementing this. And we have. And to this day, before my inmates come back to my jail in July, I already have 13 inmates in that program in other jails right now that you as a taxpayer are paying for. How is that helping them get off the drug? No. No. Do you see how doing this job is not just sitting behind a desk? It's not just telling men and women how to operate? It's not making sure that the people in jail are escaping? It's about advocating for you, the taxpayer, sometimes. Amen. And standing up for you. Amen. That's what I do. But it's also taking care of those persons inside the jail that are the inmates, having compassion, making sure they're safe, making sure they get the services. And we do a fantastic job of that. We continue to do that. And that's all thanks to my men and women in the jail. Woo! Thank you.
open line of communication, effective communication, making sure they understand the needs, the reason why we need funding that we do. I'd like to uh, have meetings with all other government departments, local organizations. All these entities are set up for the good of the people of Lewis County. We have to be a part of these meetings. We have to know what's going on. Everyone experiences different things with the people that they see or they're dealing with, not-for-profit organizations, you know, other agencies. We have to be on the same page to provide the best service possible. The only way we can do that is to work together. So it's time to work together again. It's time for change. Ask how you lead your agency. Humility of a woman. Honor. Professionalism. Honesty. Integrity. I'm proud to say that's how I lead. I'm also proud to say that we've nurtured that. We live that every day. Lewis County Sheriff's Office. I live there every day when I'm not in public. When I stop and say hello to somebody in the stores, when I stop and see a young person outside, no parent around, make sure they're okay, and the parent comes out and says, oh gosh, Sheriff, what's going on? Nothing's going to stop and say hello. Let us hear having a good day. Compassion. But you have to set the example. And working with others, as they say, the legislative body. And there's been things said about myself, I understand. Yes, I am passionate. I'm not disrespectful. I spend time in the United States Army, it's called discipline, courage, honor, and respect again. And I get that. I also expect a backdrop. I can't think of a more honorable position to hold as your county sheriff. Why? Because it's directly to the public. Directly to the public. That's who's my boss. That's who decides. Yes, I do work with legislators. I have a budget that I have to follow. I will try to work out problems that come up within the county. I'll have a frank discussion. Not a baby one, not a feel good, but an open discussion with respect to each other. But when BS is BS, I'm going to call it out. You deserve that as a taxpayer. Yeah. You also deserve to be involved in that. I'd like to see you again the doors opened up. I'd like to see more people come to those meetings. Yes, I've attended them in the past. So those people that I attend those meetings with and had a conversation with didn't like my style. You know, I never said to them, I didn't like your style. I still listened. I still went back and did what I was supposed to do. But we have frank discussions. And one thing I was always told, if you can't take the heat, you can have a fire. Right. Well, this guy's not ready to have a fire. Yeah. I want to thank you for always coming to share it. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. All right, that concludes the question and answer portion of the forum. And now we're going to move on to the closing statements from the candidates. They have three minutes each to say whatever they would like. And Sheriff, the floor is yours again.
be a part of what the process is, what's going on, not for profits, departmental, uh, clubs, ATV, and get on the same page with them. For the department, I want to make sure everyone is treated fairly, that they're in a healthy work environment, they're getting the services that they need, the resources, opportunities to train, to be effective and confident in their skills, to be safe so they can go home to their families. I also have had a great experience on the campaign trail. I uh, really enjoy getting out, meeting people, talking to these organizations, hearing concerns and interests that they have. It's been an enjoyable experience working with the people in this county again. And I would like to continue that as your share. Thank you.